I'm Sven Krause with Meridian Laboratory. Meridian Laboratory is a manufacturer of slip rings and high current rotary grounds. And today, we'll be showcasing seven different ways to provide a ground circuit to a rotating workpiece or device. Some typical applications of where rotary ground might be used include rotational welding of tanks, pipes, and other heavy metal structures, rotational plasma cutting of sheet metal and pipe processing, in electroplating and other deposition based applications including heavy manufacturing and semiconductor processing and really anywhere where current needs to rotate within a closed circuit. There are many ways to transfer current between a stationary and rotating part of a machine or an application and today we'll be showing you these different methods and the benefits and drawbacks associated with each of them. The main features of a rotary ground to consider include its longevity or how long it's going to last before needing replacement, the maintenance or adjustment frequency required during its use, and finally, the performance, electrically speaking, in its ability to deliver steady and uninterrupted current without high spikes and drops in amperage. We're going to be exploring seven different rotary grounds and sharing how they work, how they perform, and what works best for different uses and applications. We're going to start by looking at our Meridian Laboratory Rotocon ERG400, which is rated to 400 amps at 100% continuous duty cycle. Here's how it works. Current flows through the copper shaft, supported by ball bearings, and is transferred via a conductive liquid wetted contact that is sealed and contained within a stainless steel housing. The most basic type of rotary ground, both in cost and complexity, is a braided strap with a clamp. Here's an overview of how it works. The braided strap is wrapped tight around the shaft being grounded and a clamp is then attached to it. Current flows through the shaft through the surface of the metal braided strap and ultimately into the stationary ground clamp. Another option is using a bearing pressed into a housing as a carrier and means of both rotation and electrical current flow. Current flows through the shaft into the center race of the bearing, through the steel balls, and ultimately into the carrier housing whose function it is to mount an electrical lug to. The next option that is relatively common is using carbon impregnated brass brush blocks. Here's how they work. The spring loaded brush blocks slide on the outer surface of a rotating shaft and current is transferred through the brush blocks to a stationary ground cable attached to them. This is really similar to how a brush slip ring or a commutator block like function. Moving on, this is a rotary ground made by Sumner Manufacturing model ST107. Here's how it works. Current flows from the clamp through a pin to a bronze bushing via metal on metal contact between the pin and the bushing. And a ground cable is attached to the stationary swivel. Another commercially available rotary ground is a Lenko Model C. The basis of how it works is that current flows into the copper shaft, which relies then on a spring-loaded bolt to provide force on the metal-on-metal -metal contact between the brass surfaces which rotate against each other during use. Finally, we have a Tweco RG140 rotary ground. Current flows into the brass shaft, which then spins in the center of a brass housing. This requires grease between the two metal on metal contacts during rotation. It also has an adjustment screw on the side to vary the amount of compression placed onto the shaft during rotation. Now that you've seen the different types of rotary grounds we'll be testing today, let's get started. To show you how these different types of rotary grounds work and perform, we'll be using a high current DC power supply and a rotating shaft. To replicate the current flow, which a typical high current rotary application might see. We'll also be using a fluke digital clamp meter to measure the fluctuations in amperage during rotation. As I mentioned earlier, there are three main attributes by which a rotary ground can be characterized by. The first being the longevity or the lifetime the rotary ground provides before needing replacement or to be rebuilt. The second is the maintenance frequency it requires throughout the course of its use. And finally, the electrical performance it provides in its ability to rotate without changes in resistance, resulting in varying amounts of current the workpiece sees. Steady current delivery is important to ensure a consistent amount of amperage is delivered to the rotating workpiece to guarantee consistency both 
while rotating, as well as between cycles of parts. In a best case scenario, the amperage would never change part to part or over time and guarantee absolute product consistency. With fluctuations in current, for instance, in a welding application, this would result in varying degrees of penetration and inconsistency during rotation and between different parts. We're going to begin our shootout with the Rotocon ERG 400. As you can see, it is completely sealed that has no wear points and therefore no type of adjustment or maintenance is necessary. Insulation is done by threading one end into the rotating shaft or workpiece and connecting a ground cable to the other end. With it now installed, let's get testing. With the power supply still set to 400 amps at a constant voltage, this closely resembles how welding or plating line would be configured in a production setting. Current is now flowing through the entire circuit. With our Fluke amp meter, we can measure there's approximately 0.1 amps of variation while current is flowing through the rotary ground. Now we will be testing the braided strap method for grounding. Insulation is done by wrapping the braided strap around the shaft as tight as possible to maximize the surface area and then clamping the two ends together with a ground clamp. Let's see how it performs. With the power supply still set to 400 amps, current is flowing through the entire circuit. While it's rotating, we see about 35 to 45 amps of variation. Here we have the ball bearing and carrier assembly. Installation is done by pressing the ball bearing onto the shaft and attaching a ground lug to the carrier assembly. With it now installed, let's get testing. The power supply is still set to 400 amps and during rotation, we can see that the carrier and bearing assembly fluctuates by nearly 200 amps, which is about 50% of the initial current it was set to. On top of this, it gets extremely hot and will eventually wear out. Here is the carbon brush block solution for grounding. Insulation is done by locating the spring-loaded contacts onto the shaft and connecting a ground cable to the stationary side. Let's get testing. With the power supply still set to 400 amps and current flowing through the entire circuit, we are measuring about 30 amps of variation. This is the Sumner ST107 rotary ground. We're going to install it by tightening the hand screw down onto the rotating workpiece and then attaching a ground cable to the stationary swivel. The same 400 amps of current is flowing through the entire circuit and we measure it to fluctuate by about 15 to 20 amps during rotation. This is the Model C rotary ground by Lenko. You install it by threading the copper shaft into the workpiece and connecting a ground cable to the stationary lug attachment. With it now installed, let's get testing. 400 amps is now flowing through the entire circuit and we see approximately 40 to 45 amps of variation during rotation. This is the Tweco RG140 rotary ground. Installation is done by threading the brass stud into the workpiece and then connecting a ground cable to the stationary lug. Now that it's installed, let's test it. With 400 amps flowing through the current circuit, we see the amperage fluctuating by about 20 amps while under rotation. With testing now over, some of you familiar with welding cable reels might be wondering why you'd ever have live current on a rotary ground while it's rotating. And you're right. Generally speaking, you wouldn't be actively pulling a reel and welding at the same time. However, conventional metal-on-metal -metal rotary grounds like the Tweco, Lenko, and Sumner offerings will all have varying resistances and deliver different amperages depending on where the rotary ground starts and stops. Here's a brief demo of this. As we rotate and stop the shaft, we can see the amperages are not consistent between rotations. In comparison, Here's how the Meridian Laboratory ERG rotary ground performs while indexing. We can see the amperage stays consistent regardless of where it starts and where it stops. Now that we've tested all seven different types of rotary grounds to a rotating workpiece, let's take a look and see how they stack up against one another and the differences between them. To begin, we can separate the rotary grounds into two primary categories. 
The first being more DIY solutions, which are configured from different parts that you would find really from any industrial supply house and would construct yourself. These solutions range in cost from around $60 to about $200 and may work for the occasional use in very light duty and non-automated applications. Looking at the fluctuations in current, we can see that the bearing performed the worst and the brush block performed the best. Keeping in mind that performance will not be consistent and require frequent maintenance, adjustment, and replacement. These solutions all might get you by in a pinch or if your need for grounding or rotating workpiece is rather limited. The second category are all products which are commercially available from companies such as Tweco, Lenko, Sumner Manufacturing, Meridian Laboratory, and a handful of other manufacturers. These are more commonly used in higher duty cycle production environments and semi or fully automated applications. These offerings range in price from $150 to around $550. Beginning with the Lenko, we saw the widest range of current fluctuation of around 40 to 45 amps while rotating. In the middle, the Tweco RG140, which ranges between $300 and $400, fluctuates by almost 20 amps during rotation. Of the metal-on-metal -metal contact style of rotary grounds, the Sumner ST107 performed the best by fluctuating only 15 to 20 amps during rotation. Now, comparing these to the Rotocon ERG400, even the best metal-on-metal -metal contact rotary ground showed nearly 200 times the amount of current fluctuation compared to the Rotocon ERG400, which fluctuated by only 0.1 amps. Keep in mind, the Tweco, Sumner, and Lenko offerings all require varying degrees of adjustment, user maintenance, and eventual replacement because of the basic nature of the metal-on-metal -metal wear, which is utilized to transfer the current between the stationary and rotating parts. Overall, the Rotocon ERG400 provides the most consistent and uninterrupted current delivery. Rotocon ERG rotary grounds have been tested to half a billion revolutions without showing change in electrical resistance and deliver current consistently without any fluctuation. It is a 100% sealed and maintenance-free solution, making it ideal for high volume, high duty cycle, or high value applications in which downtime and maintenance is costly, difficult to perform, or oftentimes just forgotten about. With consistent current and reliability comes, for example, better welds or more consistent plating, and overall more consistent process control, which translates into less scrap and a higher quality end product, ultimately saving time and money. As you can see, there is no single way to ground a workpiece in a rotating application. However, if your application is sensitive to downtime and maintenance, or you need consistent current delivery without fluctuation over time between parts and cycles, this is the only rotary ground solution that stands up to this challenge. If this sounds like you, reach out to Meridian Laboratory and learn how we can help solve your rotary grounding challenge. Thanks for watching this video. We look forward to hearing from you.